Hey guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at building your first iOS application using Xamarin. Now obviously to build Xamarin iOS applications, there are some prerequisites. First, you need to have an IDE. So today we're going to be using Visual Studio 2017. And you can actually download Xamarin from Visual Studio 2017 directly, as well as also Visual Studio 2015. Now, if you're on a Mac, you have two other options. You can use Visual Studio for Mac Preview Edition, or you can use the more stable Xamarin Studio. Now, whether you're doing development on a Windows computer or a Mac computer, you need to have Xcode installed. Xcode is the, the development environment from Apple, and that actually installs a few things like the iOS SDK, as well as the simulators. And finally, if you plan on using a Windows computer, you do still need to have a Mac somewhere on your network. What happens is your Windows computer is going to connect to your Mac using what we call the Xamarin Mac Agent. And it will actually walk you through the process. It's very basic. When you first try to create your iOS application, it will tell you how to connect to your Mac. All right, so let's get started. In this first video, we're going to just do a simple Hello World application. In the future videos, we'll dive deeper into storyboards and table views and navigation and all the fun things with building iOS applications. So let's start by going to File, New, Project. And today we're interested in building what's called a single view application. So we go to iOS, we're going to go to iPhone, and we're going to build a single view app. You can go ahead and select on that. You can give it a name. I'll call this my first iOS app and I'll click OK. And then it's going to go off and start creating the project. OK, so when it's done loading, if you look at the bottom left hand corner, you can see down here it says successfully connected to a Mac. That means everything's good and we can start building our iOS app. Now, during that loading process, if you weren't connected, it would have prompted you to connect and would walk you through all the steps to do that. So before we start actually writing some code and building our app, let's go through the Solution Explorer and kind of look at the different pieces that make up an iOS application. So let's start with main.cs. So just like your typical you know, console application, in iOS we have a main entry point. And there's actually one single method call in here, uiapplication.main. And this is actually doing two important things. First, it's initializing the UI framework for iOS, which is UIKit. And second, it's identifying a class that will be responsible for receiving system-wide events. That's called the app delegate. So as you can see, this string app delegate and then if you look in your Solution Explorer, there's a class called App Delegate. Now, don't be confused here. It's not the actual name of the class that's matching, this, that's matching this string right here. It's actually the register attribute. This right here is registering this class with the Objective-C runtime. So this has to match that, but by default, it always will in your application. So what actually is the App Delegate for? Well, the app delegate does a few things. First, you can see this window right here. So the app delegate is responsible for defining the root window. The window is basically what we draw all of our screens onto. And actually, applications can have multiple windows. Typically, we'll have more windows when we have maybe external displays that we want to draw to as well. But for the, for the most part, you'll have one window per application. Below that, you can see we have a bunch of our lifecycle events. So things like finished launching, on resign activation, did enter background, will enter foreground. These are all different lifecycle events that we can then tap into and write code to run when those events happen. And then finally, we don't see it here because technically we're using a storyboard, which we'll talk about in more detail next class. But what we're gonna what we're gonna see here is that. The app delegate is actually responsible for creating what we call the root view controller. 
Uh, the root view controller you can think of right now is the default screen. So when you launch your application, what screen is visible? That's the default view controller. So before we continue on, let's actually just open up the storyboard just for a second so you can kind of see what it looks like. So once it's loaded, you'll see that on the left-hand side, we have our toolbox. So just like in WPF, you have all your controls. You can go through these, drag, drop them onto the screen. You can see in the center, we actually have our root view controller. And this is going to be the page that's displayed when the application first runs. So I could start designing it right here. On the bottom right, we have the properties pane, which allows us to select a control and make modifications to it. So like I said, we'll focus in, we'll focus on the storyboard a lot more in the next video. But for now, in this course, we're actually going to build our UI all in code just to give you kind of the experience of both sides. So continuing on, we have the info.plist file. So this is actually just an XML file. And it allows you to set basic settings for your application, like the, the bundle name, the versioning information, supported orientations, right? If you want your app to only be portrait. Um, it defines things like the main storyboard, the, the startup screen, just, you know, some information. We also have, however, the entitlements.plist. This is the same idea, but this is more for like adding permissions, saying, hey, I want my application to use CloudKit. So I would kind of register that in my entitlements.plist. We also have another folder type thing called the asset catalogs. Uh, so basically what this is, it allows us to group our assets together, together in one catalog. And this is really useful for dealing with like different resolution images. For example, your application icon. Normally we have to add into the application project all the different icons, different resolutions in different areas. But with an asset catalog, we can add them all in the same file, which makes it very easy to see all the different sizes and see everything in one place. And then finally, we also have the resources folder. This is where a lot of our non-code files will go. Images, um, you know, in this case, we have a zip file, which we'll talk about in, in the future. And, you know, just mostly non-code files. And then we also have components. This allows us to add components from the Xamarin Component Store, which is a store that's unique for Xamarin specific controls and components. It's sort of like NuGet, but just Xamarin specific. It also supports a pricing model as well. And then finally, last but not least, we have the viewcontroller.cs. So this is actually the code behind file for that screen that we saw on the storyboard. So this is actually responsible for kind of like powering and managing all the views on the screen. So imagine you had buttons and labels. The view controller is really what creates those and also manages them and listens to them. For example, if you want to subscribe to the buttons click event, you would do that here in the viewcontroller.cs. Now, one important method I want to point out is this override for view did load. This is basically our constructor here for our UI. You know, anytime you're going to touch the UI, you want to do it after, either after or inside of view did load because this gets called when the root view has been loaded and all the sub views have been loaded as well. So well, this is a great place for actually creating your sub views. It really gets called when the, the root view is created. And what I mean by that is there's actually a property built in called view. This gives us access to that root view. And by default, the root view is the entire size of your screen. So if we want to add a new button or label, we would add it to this view. Now, the way that we're going to do that is let's start off by creating, let's say, a label. So in iOS, a label is called a UI label. So we'll say UI label, label equals new UI label. We'll then say label.text. We'll say, let's make this hello world. And then we also need to, um, we need to position it. 
So the way that we position it, there's actually multiple ways, and we'll talk about ways in the future, like using constraints. But today we're gonna, we're gonna use absolute positioning by setting its frame property. Um, so if we say label.frame, you can see frame is of type CG rect. It's basically just a rectangle. So I'll say frame equals new CG rect. And inside the constructor of CG rect, we're gonna pass in an X, Y width and height. So we'll just say the X, we'll just, you know, put it somewhere on the screen, 50 comma 50. So it's, it's inset from the top of corner a little bit. And then we'll give it a width and height. I don't know, we'll say 50, 50 again. That should be big enough. Maybe not, who knows. Um, but we set the frame now. And then the last thing we have to do is we have to add it to the actual screen. So remember, I told you there's a built-in property called view, which gives you access to the root view of the view controller. So I'm going to say view dot add sub view, where I'm adding a sub view, and we're going to add our label. Now, obviously, I could continue customizing. I can change colors. I can change fonts. I can change font sizes. I can do everything I want, but this is just a really basic example. So now let's go off and actually run the application and see if it works. Okay, so the application's running, and a couple of things I want to point out. First, obviously, as you can tell, uh, the width of our label was not big enough to fit all the text, so we can fix that in a second. But also, this thing that I'm using right now to show you the iOS simulator on my Windows computer is just a remoting technology. And it's a new, fe a new feature available with Xamarin. Now, if you don't have this, it's completely fine, you can just debug and simulate right to your Mac computer and then just look at the simulator on your Mac. That works just fine. Um, let me fix this. I'm just going to close this and I'm going to make the width. Which one is the width? This one. I'm gonna, I'll just make it 250 instead. And let's rerun this. All right. So there you have it. Now you can see our full label that says hello world. So like I said, in the next video, We'll start diving into storyboards, which will really enable us to build a more uh, sophisticated UI very easily. So guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.